Hello everybody and welcome back to Reloading with Brittany Scovel. Today's episode, you'll be seeing like four weeks after. Mm -hmm. So what's the date today? The March 21st? 22nd? Yeah, March 22nd. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 22nd. Yeah. We have got Allie. Hello. And Grace. Farmer Hi. Grace, you might know her on social media. <laughs> so I will first get into Allie. Where are you from? I am from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, Owensboro, Kentucky. A lot of people are like, where is that even at? And it's very hard to explain. If you haven't been there, then you don't know. But really, actually, I'm from Hancock County. Um, and that's actually where Chris is from. But it's a very small town. Very, very small town. Okay, and so how did you guys meet? We actually grew up together. We went to school together. Yeah, we went to school together in Hancock County. And then I don't even know how old we were when we met. We just kind of known each other forever. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you guys have been friends for a good bit. Yeah. Long oh, time. Yeah. Long time. <laughs> yeah. And we, me and you met um, in Colorado. Yes, which was absolutely amazing. It was so fun. It was a good time. It yeah. was when um, I hosted my first ever women's waterfowl hunt. Mm -hmm. We had girls from all over come in. Yeah. And that was hosted through Platte Basin again. We've mentioned mm -hmm. them a lot on this podcast. Which they were 10 out of 10. They were mm -hmm. amazing. They were so good. I was so nervous, and everything went so smooth. Yeah, the yes. girls were awesome. It was yeah, it was, it was a, a good time. Fun. Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad that I got to go because all of the girls that I got to meet, absolutely awesome. I actually still talk to a lot of them. A lot that's of good, them. Yeah. and that's what it's all about: yeah. is building your community and just having that strong Agreed. base. Yeah, like get together. Hey, you want to go fishing next month? Let's <laughs> let's go to a different state and go fishing. And Grace, you don't actually hunt at all. I think I've been hunting like once in my life. <laughs> gotcha. And so we're here right mm -hmm. now because we've got a women's shed hunt here that we're doing. So tomorrow we'll be doing some shed hunting, a lot of walking. You're big in ag. So what is your background? What is your background? As far as ag? Yeah. I'm an eighth generation farmer. So I'm eighth? Yes. Holy <laughs> Oh my, I, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, over 200 years. So I was born into it. It's been part of my life since I was born and I have seven siblings. None of them are interested. How many brothers, how many sisters? Five brothers, two sisters. None of them, none of your brothers? What do they all do? No. One that's older than me, he works at a factory right down the road from their house. And the younger ones, they're still young enough. They don't have like set in stone careers yet, but they're into like sports. And one of my brothers, he does fish a lot. He loves to fish. And Allie, how about you? What's your background? What did you like doing growing up? And where do you work? Well, I actually, that's a, I feel like that's a really loaded question. <laughs> I, feel like it, I feel like it is. <laughs> um, growing up, so I'll give a very, very short rundown of it. Growing up, my parents actually divorced when I was younger. So uh, my parents lived in two different counties, but they're right beside each other. My dad was always on a volunteer fire department, and then my mom was a dispatcher, and she actually worked on an ambulance. So that influenced a lot of my childhood. I was always around it. Like, I've always felt like I always lived in a firehouse. So you got to, like, see, experience things, and I really, like, grasped onto it from a young age. So probably back in 2020, I think, I went and got my CNA license. And I always told myself, I was like, I'm going to work in the ER. Like, that's where I want to work. Because I always wanted to, like, work and experience trauma-based medical field part of things. And so I went and got my CNA license. And I actually started to work on a med surge floor at our hospital in Owensboro. And then I just started working down in the ER there probably about, mm, I think I started there this past July. Okay. And I actually just got my EMT license this past semester. And then in August, I'll actually be starting the paramedic program. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it makes me a little nervous because I can technically go work on a truck and work in an ambulance right now. But it's so foreign to me that I'm like, I don't know about it. Because the right. only aspect that I've really been around it is seeing my mom do those things and like what she had done and like being around the people that was basically like a second family to me seeing that part, not actually working it. Mm -hmm. So trying to get that is crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. And Allie, so we actually initially talked about doing like a three-way podcast. <laughs> yeah. Me, you, Aspen, we were going to yeah. do like, and we didn't know how we were going to get that set up because yeah. you're in Kentucky. 
I, you know, I'm, I'm here yeah. in Aspen's in Colorado. Yeah, that, it's a lot. And yeah, that would have been fun. The three yeah. of us. I just, I didn't know what kind of dynamic that would look like. And yeah, it's, it's a lot. I've learned that podcasting it's, there's so much, there's a lot that goes into behind the behind scenes it. Mm-hmm. in different States that far apart. Mm-hmm. Been a lot. We could probably figure out how to do it like online. Like yeah, probably. do video. Yeah. Probably. So we might be, we might do a couple of those, like maybe periodically we'll do some online Zooms, the three of us. I would be down for that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Cool. Yeah. Okay, back to Grace. (laughs) So let's talk about social media. When did you start (laughs) on social media? Did it, you know, did you want to do social media or did it just kind of, you started vlogging what you did around the farm and, and you, you learned how to make a two way business out of, out of doing it? So to give a little background, when I graduated high school, went to college, because I thought that's what you were supposed to do, kind of the default option, went to college. After about a year and a half, I was like, this sucks. So I dropped out and I had no idea what I was going to do. So I went to a local shop in town and I was like, hey, um, y'all need any welders? I'm not certified. And what you are, you can weld. I was a welder for like a year and a half. Ah, okay. Welder fabricator. Nice. It was a lot of fun and I miss it. But I think like three months into me working there, I posted a reel on Instagram just for bits and gigs and it blew up. And I like started gaining followers. What video? Something in like a tractor or combine, just like one of the voiceover kind of videos. Okay, yeah. So that blew up and I was like oh all right (laughs) I might keep trying this so I posted another one it went viral too and that's when reels first came out so they were really pushing them hard and I think that's how I got my start is being one of the first people to start actually posting reels and after that I was like there might be something to this so I started posting YouTube videos and kind of getting my feet wet so after I think like a year Less than a year, I was able to put my two weeks in at work and do farming and social media full time. Oh my God, I love that. Because while I was welding, average day in the life, wake up at 3.30, go to the gym, be at work at 6, work until 4, go to the farm, work and video at the farm, go home and edit until like midnight, and then do it over again. And after... That sounds like a lot. It was a lot, but it was fun. I mean, it was, everything was still so new. It was, I loved it. Like it was a good kind of busy. Right. Yeah. So then, you know, after a year or so of doing that, I was like, I got to make something else work. And finally, I started making enough off of YouTube, just off the views to quit my welding job. Oh my gosh. So I was going to ask, you're talking about reels a lot. So you didn't like blow up on TikTok or anything. It was reels. That's interesting. Yes. Reels is where I got started. I didn't download TikTok until like two years after that because I was so against it. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. And is it because it's Chinese owned or what? Or it's just, you know, a lot of people can get lost in it. Yeah. That was a big part of it. I'm very like, once I see one thing, I'm like, hmm. And I'll just sit there and scroll and scroll and scroll until I get like hours past. I'm like, wow, I wasted so much time. It's so bad because you don't even realize it. No. Like, you're just sitting there and you just go down this massive rabbit hole. And then you're like, oh, look at that. Three hours yes. later, I should probably go be productive now. Like, and that's what are we like doing? when people ask me, like, do you love social media or do you hate social media? And it's like there's positives and negatives both ways. And I think that's a negative. Like people just don't have the self-discipline yeah. to stop and start the timers or you know put the do not disturb on it's a lot going on and you you don't even realize that you know you're seven minutes deep or like 20 videos down yeah for real right and that's a negative for I mean it's negative for everybody to just sit there and watch and watch and watch but it's kind of a positive for us when people do that yes because that is how we're successful yeah So, so when did you get like your first, um, like collaboration or partnership? So I had a lot of like the affiliate link kind of brand deals starting out as I was still a really small channel and platform. But I think my first like legit brand deal was a couple years ago with Shell Rotella and Pennzoil. So I worked with both of them. Really? 
Wow. And that's, I mean, that sounds pretty legit for your niche too. That one was a really good brand deal. I like that one. Yeah. Because the people were really nice and it was a good start to seeing what a brand deal should be like. And you know, a lot of influencers and creators, they just, they demand a lot from brands. And it's really important how you approach a brand because you can't just say, hey, I've got 300,000 followers. Um, I was wondering if you could send me this for this much. Like, For me, going into a brand, I want to show them that I can build a relationship with them because once you show them that you can trust one another, that's that's an awesome foundation for a reoccurring brand. And yeah, I think that there's a lot of influencers that mess that up, but I think that's important is building um, a good foundation. And so do you talk with these brands still? Have you ever worked further with them? Sharotella and Pinzoil I worked with for two years. So that one was really long term, really good relationship with them. And it was a lot of fun. Went to a few events with them. So like I said, it was a great start to how a brand deal should work. Back to what you said about some influencers will go in and they'll approach it wrong. And they'll just say, here's what I have. What can you do for me? Like if you take a step back and you're like, here is everything that I can do for you. Here's how I can help you. Like, let's work together. Like, you don't need to talk about what can you pay me? Like, what's your budget? Like, you don't need to bring that up yet. Mm -hmm. If anybody's watching this, that is, you know, a brand, if you're affiliated with a company, I, I don't think people realize how important influencers can be for marketing for a company. And it's thinking outside of the box. Like, we are essentially... The ad, like, you know, you see people and companies and brands spend like $20,000 on making an ad that you see on your TV, assuming that you are watching that TV show and that ad at that time. And social media, you are everywhere. Right. So my boyfriend, Gavin, made a really good point. We went to the Farm Machinery Show in Louisville a few weeks ago, and he was talking to one of the companies and they were like, these shows are on a downhill because we pay millions of dollars to be here when we could pay an influencer however much money and we can give them product for free. And that's going to reach so many more people who are actually interested because you get these shows and it's like a fun family day. Like people take their kids there just to look at all the cool stuff. But if you work with influencers who are, whose audience is the people you're trying to reach, it'll be so much cheaper and so much more authentic and and organic organic. yeah it really is it's like someone might not even know that you're working with that brand just simply because you're wearing that t-shirt and just because it's in your niche they think that that's a brand that you use and it probably is a brand that you use right yeah and that's another thing is I really make sure that I don't do this people will jump around with a bunch of different brands within the same scope and it's like now we know that you're not authentic because you're going from this brand to this brand. That's a direct competitor this to, competitor to yes. right. So making sure you're not doing that. And like, don't not taking the first brand deal that comes your way just because it is a brand deal. Like you want to make sure that it's somebody you actually like. Yes. And I think another important thing is knowing your worth when it comes to negotiating pay. Because an influencer has so much say in the pay and you can negotiate and Nine times out of 10, that brand might circle back to you or you just send another message to them a week later and you get the pay that you want. Right. And I was talking to a girl yesterday, actually, or was it today? I had lunch with a girl today and we were talking about a brand that she works with and they just give her free equipment and that's it. And she is like bending over backwards to do everything for this brand. And I was like, you have to stand up for yourself. And it is really hard to do that, but so important. And I could say, you're a pretty humble person. And I do that sometimes. I don't stick up for myself when I know I should be paid. But you love the brand or you love the person so much, you don't want to. Because just the product is enough. But really, it's not. Like, we need to be paid for our time and our our presence. There was a brand that wanted to work with me. I have an agent now who does all that stuff for me just to take some of that off of my plate. And this brand that I love we could not reach an agreement. Like their budget just wasn't high enough for what my agent thought I deserved. So we couldn't come to an agreement, but it's a brand that I already wear every day and I'm already promoting because I genuinely do love it. So they were like, we can't come to an agreement, 
but we can give you an affiliate link and we can do that and continue to build our relationship. And as much as I hate that, I'm wearing it anyway. Right. And I do think later down the road, this yeah. relationship will Eventually. grow into something bigger. So that's why it's like, don't jump to another brand who can give you money now, even though that's not the one that you love. Because when you make the switch, people are going to look at you like you're not honest and you're kind of a sellout. Okay, so you came from... I came from Missouri, two and a half hours south. Today, for the travels for the mm -hmm. chef hunt. And you came from Kentucky? Yes, I came from Owensboro. Yeah. And that's about a seven hour yeah, drive? Yeah, probably about six, seven hours, somewhere in between there. And you guys met? Like on your way here and yeah. then drove. Yeah, we met about, about two hours away hour from here. Hour. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. we are after this podcast, we'll probably just, you know, chill at the fire and yeah. wake up early tomorrow and go shed hunting. Yeah. And you've been shedding hunting before. Um, To an extent, yes. So like, I feel like, I don't know if we've talked about it before. Like when I was younger, probably like 2016 my great granddad actually passed away and we had a farm but when he passed we don't have the farm anymore so whenever that's where we would always hunt we had two different locations and periodically would go over there it wouldn't be like deep dive into shed hunting mm -hmm. but we'd go walk see yeah. if we could find anything it was nothing like this it was nothing like solely go out deep dive yeah that's just what skimming yeah pretty much okay yeah gotcha mm -hmm. so it's kind of like just putting like a toe in the water you mm -hmm. know? yeah and tomorrow we have like a group of 24 people here mm -hmm. with us we've got like 10 girls signed well, actually we have like 12 yeah 12 right. girls signed up i think mm -hmm. one of them was sick that backed out quick but we've got a lot of property to cover mm -hmm. tomorrow we're going to do a lot of walking i'm hoping that we can get through like a lot of ground but yeah. i think that we're going to get tired pretty quick you think so? Get, well, it just rained, so I'm assuming oh, yeah. everybody's going to be wearing their big, chunky muck boots. I just feel so sluggish when I have those things on. Like, I want my They're hiking heavy. boots. They, they are. are heavy. So if They're I wear so those, good, I know, I don't want get my feet to get wet <laughs> and muddy. So I'm like, Fuck, I don't know what yeah, to do. I can't, I can't do cold feet, bro. No. I can't do it. That's when I don't feel my toes, and then I'm just mad. <laughs> Actually, so I will mention this to you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't said it to any of the girls yet, but we are doing an adult Easter egg hunt tomorrow. I've got, like, these big golden Easter eggs. You do not. That is so funny. And they will be randomly placed, and yeah. it's just full of... Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome, though. That's yeah, hilarious. That's a surprise. We've got like five or six of those eggs that'll be... Th that's what'll be planted. No oh, sheds. <laughs> no sheds will be planted. <laughs> we don't play fake games. <laughs> and fake we've games. got the Scout to Hunt app that I've got all the girls signed up to do. Mm -hmm. So they'll know how to learn, you know, how to read a map, how to look at it, what to... All the cool features on it. And we've also got those sunglasses, the fun guy sunglasses that everybody's going to be wearing. And it highlights all of the white that you see. So it should be pretty, pretty interesting to see yeah. like a bright, you know, antler tine sticking out. I'm pretty like, I'm actually very excited about it. And like, even from Colorado and then doing this here, you getting brands to be able to like give us stuff is awesome. Yes. And I'm really excited about it too, because like, I don't know, from here and being in Colorado, there's just so many different things and aspects of both places that I've learned. And not only just like from doing it and experiencing it, but as far as like... And you're talking about the waterfowl hunt in yes. Colorado compared yes. to here for the yes. shed hunt. Okay. Yes. And like um, the app that you showed us. Mm -hmm. Scout to hunt. Didn't even know it was a thing. Didn't even know it was a thing. And I started looking at it a while ago and I was like, this is actually pretty nice. I'm it's, probably going to use cool. this all the time. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, uh, the sunglasses that you got us for fun guys. So, no, you can't, like, literally find them anywhere. Cannot find them anywhere from where I'm at at all. And I was trying to actually explain this to my husband the other day because I was like, no, yeah, I don't think that you understand what these glasses are. He went into a massive deep dive, and he was trying to figure out, like, how these glasses were made <laughs> and, like, all kinds of things. Like, when he thinks about things, they're so in-depth. So he was really trying to break it down and understand what these glasses were. And I was like, I don't know how to explain it to you. And him. there's a, the guy, the owner of the – small business, by the way. He does mm -hmm. everything himself. Really? Yes, and I, w I did want to make that a point because hmm. you always rep your small businesses, but... Yeah, that's awesome. I did not know that. He said that there's a lot of technology and it was like years of figuring out the right shades and a lot of science that go behind the sunglasses. They're actually a very good quality, hmm. good durable 
Yeah. The more you know. Yeah, the more you know. <laughs> but that's good to know. And yeah. I guess I like hosting things like these just to get people involved. But it's also a big community thing. Like mm-hmm. when we went to Colorado on the waterfall hunt, there was some moms in our group. And yeah. that's a big community thing for single, not single moms, but yeah. any moms, if you know, making friends, just like my mom was telling me when she was growing up, you know, she was going through a time where she didn't have a lot of friends and mm-hmm. she joined a running club. She doesn't like running. <laughs> so she joined a running club and she has like lifelong best friends just because of the community. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. And I love I love the community. Just well, like that was mine. one big thing for me. Is like at first, so funny story. So whenever the whole thing came up for to be able to go do this hunt in Colorado, mm-hmm. so it was very like quick spur of the moment for me. Like because I mean I'm from Kentucky, and then that's Colorado. That's all the way on the other side. So I mean, was it the day that I, the day of that I came over to your house and told you about it? It may have been the day after. I don't remember day after what? that I found about out the that I was water. going. She's like, F- it, dude, I can't remember. It was either remember. the day of or like the day after. And I hadn't said anything to her until I got to her house. And I was like, so this is what's going on. This is where I'm going. This is when it's happening. And she was like, you're going by yourself. <laughs> and I was like, yep. And she goes, you're driving that far by yourself. I said, you did. Yep, I did. You got pulled over too. No, I didn't get pulled over. Okay. So <laughs> wait, I thought you did. What happened was, so whenever I left, I didn't drive straight through Kansas and go into Colorado. I drove through like a small part of Kansas and cut over in Nebraska and went straight to Colorado. Okay. So the very small part of Kansas that I had to drive through, which had nothing, it was like three o'clock in the morning. There was not a soul around. No one, like no traffic. There was one car behind me. That's it. And I was driving through. Well, I'm just like, I am on like my phone is like on my dashboard hanging up. And I was like, there was a girl that I knew that was also on her way to Florida with her friends. And she was like, if you get tired, whatever, just like call me. Like, I'll try to help like keep you awake until you get. Because I actually got a hotel room in Lincoln, Nebraska. And that's I where I remember I was that. Stay. Yes. yes. And you were really tired. Yeah. But it's yeah. okay. It was so worth it. It is so fun. <laughs> so I'm on FaceTime with her. And like, I start flipping out. And she's like, what is wrong? Because I was driving. There's one car. Okay. I look up behind me and there's cop lights and I'm like freaking out. I'm like, why am I getting pulled over? Like I was not speeding. I had my seatbelt on. It is three o'clock in the morning. What are we doing? No, they were in a car chase. (laughs) They were in a car chase and it was a very old truck and it was not just one cop. It was like six to eight cops. And what? Wait, did you tell me this part? I don't know. Or maybe was it just that foggy in my brain? I don't know. I don't think I remember it being a chase. I thought you just got pulled over. Holy shit. No, it was definitely a car chase because, okay, so I was driving to, and, like, there was an off-ramp. Well, this was, like, this little white car. I don't even know what kind of car it was. I had zoned that part (laughs) out. So I start pulling over because I'm like, I don't want any part of this. And this white car was going the same direction as me, but they were also pulling over. But they started pulling over onto the off-ramp to stop so we could just get out of the way. Well, the same time all this is happening, this truck that they're chasing turns its headlights off and just literally floors it. A back tire of this truck flew off and almost hit my truck. (laughs) And at the time, I started freaking out because I hadn't even had my truck a month and I had just got it. I remember that. I still had temp plates on the back of it. And I was like, that would be my look. I would buy my truck and then it would get totaled out in the middle of Kansas when I'm from Kentucky. What do you do? Right. Weird, total, like, (laughs) freak accident, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. Last thing I expected on this whole trip. And I was like, this would happen to me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when you, like, what was your first, when you first met me on that trip, what was your first impression? Um, And then what was your impression after leaving? over me so I think my first impression so when we originally when I first got to the house the first person I actually met was Emily Mm -hmm. and then we had went to Walmart and went on our little excursions and then came back to the house and then I think that you and Aspen had walked in yes I think so I think because we were all in the kitchen I think you had walked in we had Mackenzie I believe right it was the three of us yes because you yeah Mm -hmm. you all had to go pick up Mackenzie didn't you yep yes 
and I um, told her family when we were picking her up <laughs> that we were like we were here to kidnap your daughter yes. or, or your your niece and they fr- I was like oh shit I'm so sorry like I, I'm so kidding <laughs> it was funny though because she's like no really they made me face they were kind because of they were freaking, freaking out. out because they're like they're like they're gonna stick you in a basement <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and then it but was, that safety that was a big thing for a lot it of it was great though because even after the fact like the last day we went to go eat and uh mike actually paid for our lunch was he did. so nice and that was so sweet, sweet. Yes. came out of nowhere i know very sweet he did not have to do that thank you mike which was funny because we had all known about her having to tell them that she was going to be fine and nobody's going to stick her in a basement we all go to Mike's because we're all going to leave and we all needed to shower, get ready, whatever. <laughs> Lo and behold, Mike has a basement. <laughs> Mike has a basement. <laughs> Mike has a basement. And Mackenzie thought that was the funniest thing. She goes, should I send him a picture of me in this basement? I was like, don't. <laughs> You're going to make them all have a heart attack. Don't do that. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, yeah that was that, that was, was a fun yes, trip. It was a really good trip. And, yeah, just having you and seeing you here. It's, it's so awesome. Yeah, it's been it's been a good time. I can't wait till tomorrow. I think mm-hmm. it's going to be super, super fun. But I think my first impression of you, like, I don't know, you walked in the house. I don't know. I didn't feel any bad vibes or anything. You were just very, like, you just talked to us like you've known all of us your whole life. Like, you were very, like, welcoming. And it was, like, me having anxiety because, I mean, I'm in Colorado and did not know a single one of you i'd be shitting my pants um low-key felt like i was going to at some points and i know that i was super awkward i know that i was because i was like i don't you gotta fill people out you know because you don't know how people are gonna take you and i can be very sarcastic but some people can take it the wrong way she also has rbf i do (laughs) so bad everybody's always like fix your face and i'm like what do you mean or they'll be like, are you okay? Yes, I'm f***ing okay. If you ask me yes. again, I'm not. Like, I'm not yes. going to be. Yes. <laughs> Austin be- all the time. I'm like, it's so bad because my RBF's so bad. And if I don't have makeup on, people automatically think that I'm sick. I'm like, what? I'm, yeah, because They so, say like, you look sick? Yes, because, like, I have really light colored eyelashes and things. And I just look sick. Well, you have colored eyelashes? No, like, a light colored. Oh, like, light colored. Yes. Okay. And... Uh, I have makeup on right now, so I probably don't look that pale. But um, you look beautiful. Oh, thanks. You look beautiful. Thanks. And her hair is the same color as my wiener. Yeah, we match. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this, my dog is here. You know, I've got a weenie dog. Yeah, we. He's just sweeping. Have the same hair. Honestly, his little curly too. Mine also does that. We could be twins for real. Did you came from the same litter as me? I don't see a difference, for real. Y'all look exactly the same to me. I can't tell. Sibling, 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 sibling. This is my sister. This is my brother. (laughs) Okay, I think we might wrap it up a little bit. I'll just ask you guys, like, what is the craziest DMs you guys have received? And who is the most famous person in your contacts right now? I can go first with the craziest DM. When I was spoonbill fishing, I posted this picture of me and the spoonbill. And, you know, fish don't smell great. I had like fish guts all over, had blood like covered everywhere mm-hmm. on me. I posted a picture of me holding the spoon bill and I get a DM from this guy saying, hey, I was wondering if I could buy your jacket that you were wearing um, on this fishing trip, uh, specifically unwashed and I will give you any amount of money. And you're done. I'm like, what? No. What? No. Dude, that thing, I you can't get the smell out. Even like white vinegar it was fishy. It sounds like that dude don't care. Send oh it to him. Oh my. No, he don't care. She, I she, mean, she, make she, him pay you and buy another one. <laughs> Money, please. Thank you. I mean, I'm going on another spoonbill trip next month. If I get a, a DM, I'll just so give him a, you're watching, a flat rate. You're about to get a jacket. You're make a little website. Yeah. Sell those used jackets unwashed. <laughs> <laughs> So how about you guys? Any crazy wild DMs? <laughs> too many? There's, yeah, there's too many. Lot. Yeah, there's a lot. You get a lot of creepy DMs, like just I random. I get like gross, weird ones. Just like the whole like a lot of sugar daddies. I, so yeah, I get like I have my thing set up to where like it filters my messages to like my actual like message requests to where like mm-hmm. I don't have to see yeah. the bullshit, you know. Mo- literally, most of the gross, weird ones are like I don't even I hate saying it, but it's so gross. It'll be bleep. They always be like. Hey, uh, hey, baby, have you ever had a sugar daddy? First of all, sir, you're done. Back up. No, and I don't want I'd be like, how much one. you paying me? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the requirements? How much money? No, I could never. <laughs> God, I could never. Oh, no. I think half of those gotta be scams, though. 
They have to the be. The sugar daddy ones? Yes. And, like, I get all the group chats with, like, the yes porn stars and Why? stuff. Why? Oh, my God. Yeah. So many. And it's like, I think everybody gets them. What but did she why? say? Right. Like, you why? Know, yeah. Is it a robot or what? Are these real people? AI? It's got to be a what robot or something. Yeah, it has to be. I get way too many a day for it to be a real person. Right. Yeah. It's kind of disturbing, honestly. Most famous person you guys got in your contacts? So, I know this girl, and she's pretty famous. Her name is Farmer Grace, but I don't know if you've met her or not. Actually, no, I don't th- yeah, I don't think so. She's, I mean, she's pretty great. Does she know how to drive, like, a manual? Because I'm trying to learn. Um, yeah, um, she's actually a professional. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Professional manual driver? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you ask her, she can float gears like no other. Float gears, eh? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> Teach me. <laughs> no double clutching. You're not double allowed clutch. to. Not allowed to. I love it. Do you have anybody in your contacts? Oh, shoot. I didn't even look at that. I was looking for a crazy DM. Oh, crazy DM. If not, no biggie. Can I tell them a sad, sad note? So Go ahead. Because, like, crazy DMs. So, at one point in time, like, some of her, like, crazy DMs and just people, like, posting nonchalant things, like, that you shouldn't comment on people's posts or whatever... At one point in time, she was like, here's my login. Help me go through these and delete all these because I'm over it. Like, seriously. Yes. Wait, like, what kind of messages were you receiving? I get a lot of, like, can you sell me your socks unwashed or, like, your underwear or your work boots? Or can you drive your truck with only, with your left shoe off but your right shoe on? Like, I get a lot of that. Like, that's that's one of those things, like, another day, another foot pick DM, you know? But I did get one and... This was actually really scary. So this isn't like a gross DM. This is a scary DM. I had this guy messaging me on Facebook, like blowing my (laughs) up and it was getting so annoying. And I usually don't respond. I usually just like, whatever. But this one, I don't know. It just got under my skin. And I was like, please leave me the (laughs) alone. He got really mad. And he responded and was like, God, you're such a bitch. I hope that (laughs) tractor kills you. Like all kinds of stuff. Right. And I was like, okay. All right. Sorry. Like, what were the messages like before you said (laughs) off? They were just like, tell me about your brothers and sisters. Like, yeah, creepy stuff like that. And then after he sent that, uh, a couple weeks later, he was like, hey, Grace, I stopped by your farm, but I didn't see you. So I left. But I'll be up here for a while. So hopefully we run into each other. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) Ah. So I'm I hauled a load of grain to the elevator and I get out to unroll the tarp. And this truck is leaving and he stops. And I swear to fucking God, it was that guy. I swear to God. He stopped and he was like, oh my God, it's so nice to finally see you. Hi. And I was like, he said that? Do you carry? <laughs> uh, after that, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I got a stalker from Alaska. Everybody tells me to go to Alaska, but I'm too scared. Yeah, I don't blame you. No, thanks. Mm. Well, we'll probably do a lot of walking tomorrow. Hopefully we find some sheds and we'll probably talk about it on a different episode or something. You'll you'll probably see photos on it on Instagram. But it's really fun to have you guys here and I'm glad that we got an episode done. Thanks for having us. Of yeah, course. It's been yeah. Fun. yeah. And y'all know what to do. Like, subscribe, follow, leave a review, drop a comment, all the bullshit, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fellow Ferrells, out. Mm-hmm.